Greetings, trombonists at large. I am the Vagrant Trombone, here today to talk to you about the second most important mute you'll ever own, the cut mute. The trombone cut mute. It is the second, in my opinion, the second most important mute you will ever own. Uh, the reason why I would say that is because it is the second most requested mute in commercial music that I ran into. So uh, it's probably the mute that I use most often next to a good straight mute. Now, like the straight mute, they come in metal and fiber and wood and all that good kind of stuff. But uh, for me, basically, there are two types. There's the metal cup mute and there and there is the fiber mute. I prefer, again, I prefer a fiber mute for my commercial trombone and actually for my legit, for my classical instrument as well. I just think they have a better sound. Uh, this, of course, is the classic Humes and Berg. And in fact, I was shaving these corks down to fit it to this trombone when I decided that I hey, might as well make a little video on this. So that's what I decided to do, and I am here today to talk to you about it. Though these, though this, for years, was my workhorse cup mute on tenor trombone. I uh, ran into a problem. The Humes and Berg is a fiber mute. It's a fiber mute with one of two types of cup, and this happens to be a fixed cup. The other one, the other style is a movable cup, of course, and it's got a straight mute in the middle with, with kind of a cylindrical section on it where the mute can slide up and down on the shaft. Um, this mute, however, the uh, Humes and Bergs, are notorious for being a little stuffy. And as you can see, this one's gone through quite a few <laughs> modifications. I cut the top of it off. You can see the difference here between the two. And uh, I drilled a hole in the bottom. Now this hole worked great to, to relieve pressure so that I could play more in tune in the bottom register of the instrument. And it worked fine right up until one day when I had to play a nice low A in the bottom of a chord. And I heard this. So I went in and I was listening to the replay and I heard coming out of the bottom of my mute right into the microphone and I thought, uh-oh, that's not a good thing. So if you decide to modify your mute to play better by drilling a hole in the bottom of it, don't put the mute hole, uh, put it maybe on the side. But uh, fortunately for me, I always came prepared. I had this mute, which I immediately stuck into my horn and saved the day. Now, as you can see, this mute has a very different sound. And that's one of the problems with cup mutes. Cup mutes come in many different styles, and each style has a different character of sound. Uh, the metal mutes, I don't really care for the sound of them for a simple reason that I feel I have to push too hard to get the mute to get that buzzy sound on it. I really do like the sound of this mute. It comes, this is a fiber mute, it comes with a fixed cup. It comes closest to what I really like about my Humes and Berg even though this has slightly more rounded sound, almost more velvety sound, if I put it back in the clay. It's got a nice velvety sound, where this mute is just a little more wooden sounding, a little more... It's still a nice sound, but not quite that dance band, classic Jimmy Dorsey, Tommy Dorsey, Glenn Miller sound. And um, one thing that should never get confused, though, this is a cup mute. This is a cup mute. This is a cup mute. Even this odd-looking thing is a cup mute. However, this is not a cup mute. This is a mica mute. This has this red flocking in it. The m mute part in the center is a little heavier and has this black ring on it. Mica mutes are a little different. They're supposed to fit really tightly into the bell and give you that very different kind of sound. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> you get the idea. But the mic mute is a, a different mute. Do not bring a mic mute to a battle when you've got the call for a cut mute. Don't do that. One of the reasons why I don't like adjustable cut mutes is because I had this adjustable cut mute for my bass trombone for years. And uh, one of the things that I have to do every time I pick it up or put it down is readjust the cup. Now, when I was in the studios, and sometimes we had to make some very fast cup changes, if this was in the wrong position or if it had slipped down by putting it on the floor or it was too high when I picked it up and put it in, it might be too close or too far away from the edge of my bell, giving me a different sound. And it probably wouldn't have been that noticeable, but it also changes the way the mute plays, which can affect hitting the right note. So sometimes I would crack on this, and that's one of the reasons why I prefer a fixed a fixed cup. One of the nice things about this fiber mute that I have here, though it's a fixed cup, it has adjustable corks. And so these are held on with Velcro. And so I can peel them off and place them in different parts of the mute to have the mute go in farther or out farther. It takes longer to do it, but if I want that really tight cup sound, I can actually just pull one off and get that get and drive it into the uh, drive it into the throat of the bell a little farther so I can get that sound that I want. This mute that I showed is actually a fiber mute and a metal cup. This is a Shastok mute and these have very special kinds of calls and in fact uh, this is not a mute you want to use when they're asking for a cup mute. Even though it is a cup mute it's a different kind of cup mute. This is um, a mute that was used extensively for like cartoon dates and things like that. <laughs> Uh, it's got a brighter, tinnier sound. I was playing a lot of trombone in, in Los Angeles, and uh, I was starting to do a lot of record dates. And one of the things I noticed that a lot of guys were appearing with in their bags were these Shastok cut mutes. And um, Warren Looning would have one, and he always had a Shastok cut mute. He would sometimes have two. And, um, but I also started seeing them popping up in trombone. See, when they sit down to rehearse, I, they'd open up their bag and they would be sitting there nice Shastok mute. Well, one day I got a call from Dateline and they told me to go to Burbank Studios. They wanted me there for a date with a certain writer and I knew that this is the fellow who did a lot of cartoons in Los Angeles. So I took my old, really beat up Shastok cup mute and um, I painted it and I put a new label on it and I painted it gold and, and uh, it, it had the wooden face on it before. But I've just kind of spruced it up to make it look nice. And um, when I showed up at the date, uh, all the guys were pulling out their Shastok mutes. And, of course, they looked at me and said, you brought the right mutes, didn't you? And I, when I pulled out my mute, I, was, I reached in my bag and pulled this out and said, mutes? And then they just looked and smiled. Because it matters what mutes you have. When you are in a situation where they want it to sound a certain way, you need to have the right mutes. And they're not going to tell you which ones to bring. You have to know. So, just one of those little things. So, if you're doing cartoons, or if you're doing that kind of uh, that kind of television work or movie work, or if you have eyes to do it, you might need to get one of these. They're hard to find now. But otherwise, you also need to have the classic Humesenberg, and you should always have a mute that you can really rely on, like this, like this uh, Yupon mute, fiber mute. And uh, well, that's about all I have to say about the cup mute. And uh, until next time, thank you for watching.